Hello there and welcome. In this video, we are looking at one of my favorite green macroalgae, and that is Calerpa prolifera. Now, Calerpa prolifera is an incredibly popular and versatile macroalgae that almost anyone can have in their aquariums. It lies in the chlorophyta phylum of algae, which basically means it is a green photosynthetic algae. Now the cool thing about most Calerpa species, and especially Calerpa prolifera, is that it is actually a single cell. However, within this single cell, there are many individual nucleuses which make up the entire organism. But what we can see is actually the stolon, the leaf blades, and the rhizoid, which is essentially the roots, they're all the same thing. Whereas in a plant, these would be individual specialized cells. So this means that the stolon, the rhizoids, and the leaves are all the same cell, which is pretty cool. Now, why do I like Calerpa prolifera so much? Well, there's multiple reasons. The first reason is it looks so nice. It reminds you of a freshwater planted tank. It actually reminds me quite a bit of Vallis. The second reason is it's easy to contain. Now, a lot of Calerpas are real pains to contain. You can see some at the back here. We've got Lentilifera and Taxifolia, and there is some Brachypus all mixed in there and it grows almost like a weed and it grows crazily, you can't control it. In some cases, it can be invasive and outgrow your other species. Whereas prolifera is a lot more easy to manage because it likes to be in the sand. So other than where it's been caught up in the mass of other algae, like you can see at the back there, it tends to stay on the sand bed. It doesn't tend to grow over things, it grows around things. So it's nice to have corals on the sand bed with this particular algae because it will go around it. Um, this clam, for instance, with the other algaes has been overgrown in some cases and had to remove it, but the prolifera won't do that, which makes it ideal for your display tank. Also, it won't grow on rock work. It hates rock work. And again, it will grow around the rock work. So you use Calerpa prolifera like a carpeting plant. So in fresh water, you'd probably have something like Eleocharis, the dwarf hair grass as your carpet, or Liliopsis. Well, in salt water, you can use prolifera. Now, prolifera is a hungry algae. To get it growing this densely, to get it growing this nicely, you need to give it food. It needs nitrates and phosphates, lots of the micronutrients, need dosing as well quite regularly, you'll also need to give it a healthy amount of iron. Otherwise, what happens with this plant is it can melt. And that's typical of a lot of calerpas. When they run out of nutrients or they become overcrowded, or in fact, something in the environment turns to their dislike, they will start to melt. Now you can see kind of what melting looks like here. The blade goes clear and it starts to sort of degrade down the algae. Now it's okay if this happens on one or two blades throughout the plant. It's natural, it happens all the time. But what melting means is the whole lot will just go overnight sometimes. And this can be an issue um, for your aquarium because it can release a lot of nutrients in a short period of time. Now, thankfully with Calerpa prolifera, I haven't had this happen ever. And that's one of the benefits of Calerpa prolifera. It very, very rarely melts. Whereas other species of Calerpa can melt without reason and sometimes without warning. Prolifera doesn't really tend to do that. As long as you keep it happy, keep it fed, keep it under decent lighting, and also give it a good amount of flow, it will grow very well. So in this way, I think Calerpa is probably one of my most favorite macroalgae for any aquarium. It's also excellent for seahorse, for pipefish, mandarins, all the shy fish that like a lot of cover, like to forage for food, because it's an excellent habitat for amphipods and copepods and other little inverts that these species of fish will feed upon. Please note though, Calerpa prolifera is very palatable to tangs. So if you have any tangs other than Tenakitas tangs within your aquarium, they will munch on it. Now, why do I point out there's a Tenakitas tang in here? Because Tenakitas tangs do not eat macroalgae. They will graze upon it and actually remove any epiphytes that grow upon the leaf of the macroalgae. So if you're looking for a really easy, hardy, and manageable macroalgae, I definitely recommend Calerpa prolifera. 
So thanks for watching, I hope this video has been informative. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, remember to hit the notification bell, otherwise you won't get any notifications of my new content. Once again, thank you for watching and happy fish keeping.